my name is Nadir Mawate. I'm an academic senior, and my major is biochemistry and molecular biology. My mentor is Dr. Robert Richards, and we're doing research on protein characterization. Now, protein characterization refers to the use of experimental methods to develop or understand the structure and function of a given protein. In 2010, Deepwater Horizon oil rig explosion caused the largest marine oil spill in history, and bioremediation, or use of bacteria to break down toxic compounds, was employed as one of the primary tools of cleaning up the toxic waste. Now, bacteria break down toxic compounds such as toluene, benzene, or phenol using the metacleavage pathway. And in this research, we investigated two proteins involved in the last two steps of the metacleavage pathway. The significance of this research is to gain a better understanding of the metacleavage pathway. The previous work done has characterized the structure of NHOM, ortholog DMPFG, and they have found the active site and the presence of a unique intermolecular channel connecting the two proteins. However, we still don't know how the two subunits communicate with each other, and that is the goal of the present research. The two proteins investigated in this research are co hydroxy 2 oxovalerate allylase, also known as HOA, and acetaldehyde dehydrogenase, also known as ADA. These proteins are found in these species of bacteria, in this bacteria, and are transcribed from their respective genes. Now, all of the genes are evolutionary orthologs, meaning ortholog is a gene in different species that have evolved from a common ancestor of gene by speciation. And all orthologs retain the same function in the course of evolution. Her paper, Natalie Smith, with her team, have identified the structure of DMPFG. Now, please recall that DMPFG is a structural ortholog of NAHOM. Also, this picture indicates a heterodimer or two proteins associated with two different proteins together. The actual image of the protein is tetrameric heterodimer, meaning there is a mirror image of this protein complex right next to it. Natalie Smith with her team have identified the active sites, the importance of which is in order for a toxic compound to be broken down into non-toxic products, it must bind at the active site of a protein. In this case, 4 hydroxy 2 ketovalerate binds itself at the active site of DNPFG and is broken down into pyruvate and acetaldehyde. Pyruvate is non-toxic product. However, acetaldehyde is quite toxic and very labile. For it to be further broken down or converted into final non-toxic acetyl-CoA, it must reattach itself at the DMPF active site. However, because it's toxic, it cannot be completely released into the cell cytosol, for it will harm the cell. Instead, it uses the intermolecular channel water bill to travel between the two active sites. And once it reaches the DMPF active site, it's broken down into the final non-toxic acetyl-CoA. Protein blast, blast protein sequence alignment indicated that the protein in the question, NAHM, is 56% identical to DMPG. And please note that these two reactions are identical, with the only difference being the kind of the protein employed to drive the two reactions. All of this data suggests that DMPG can be used as a very good model to deduce the structure and function of NAHM. To do the structural analysis on the two proteins, we devised this plan. For NAHM, first we have to obtain the synthesized gene product in the vector from Blue Heron technology. Next, we want to transform E. coli BL21 competent cells and grow the cells along with expressing the protein. Finally, we want to purify the protein for structural studies. Regarding NAHOM, we want to obtain a PCR gene product for the entire entire gene NHO and using the forward prime for NHM and the reverse primer for NHO. Next, we want to ligate the gene into a vector and transform, using, uh, transform the gene into E. coli competent cells. 
Next, we want to grow the cultures, the cells, and purify the protein for structural analysis. There's a typo on the slide, it should say NHO. Okay. Regarding NHO1, we performed a PCR, gradient PCR reaction to determine the most optimal annealing temperature of the protein. There's something wrong happening with the slides. Numbers are not showing up and the text is there should be more text on the previous slide. It was not a problem in the practice room. I don't know what is happening. <laughs> However, if you can see, the neatest band is the last one. And that band occurred at 64 degrees Celsius. The total size of, uh, the total length of this gene is 1,959 base pairs. And if we can see, when run along the standard, it appears to be aligned with the band at 2,000 base pairs. So that is reassuring knowing that we have successfully PCR the desired product. At this point, no more work is being done on NAHOM due to the absence of a vector which is required for ligation and future transformation, culture growth expression and purification. Regarding NAHOM, so far we have we have obtained a synthesized gene product for NAHM from Blue Panel Technology in vector with his tags. We have transformed the gene into E. coli in completed cell, and we have grown the cell that expressed the protein using the IPTG induction. Lastly, we are purifying the protein using nickel and TABs. In this experiment, we tried to separate the lysate into soluble and insoluble fractions. Now, lysate refers to everything that is inside of the cell, soluble and insoluble. The first column indicates the standard of the masses for the proteins, the reference point. Column number two is blank. Column number three is all of the soluble fraction prote proteins in the soluble fraction. And there's a very minor light band at 64 kilodaltons. Now, the weight of the protein, the mass of the protein that we are looking for is 64 kilodaltons. Further, we apply the nickel elution and this is what eluded off the beads. And we can see a very minor band once again at 64 kilodaltons. Column number seven is all of the insoluble fraction, proteins of the insoluble fraction. And we can see a little bit stronger band in there. Column number nine is another standard. Column number 10 is nickel elution. As we can see, we have eluded the desired product. With this experiment, we have two problems. First, we were not satisfied with the concentration of the protein. We want to have more of it. Second, major, um, uh, the most protein was observed in the insoluble fraction, which is a major problem because to perform a structural studies, a protein must be present in its natural form or in the soluble fraction. So we went ahead to solve the two problems. Addressing the first problem of underexpression, we tried using the cells in the presence of dextrose or glucose, which yielded these results. We have grown two sets of samples. One set of sample was induced with in the present. We have grown the samples in the presence of dextrose, and one set of samples was induced with IBCG. The other was not. As you can see, we we can see the strong overexpression, the very major band at 64 kilodaltons, suggesting that the protein is being expressed, and that in fact it's being overexpressed in the presence of dextrose. Regarding moving the protein from the insoluble fraction to the soluble fraction, we're still working on it. A couple of techniques, couple of methods employed was trying to reduce the cell growth temperature or lower the IBTG concentration. Also, try to express, co-express the protein using other proteins such as chaperones, which can aid the protein folding or unfolding. Also, we can try to decrease the glycerol concentration of lysate or add a detergent to a lysate. And that's about it. Thank you.